Hey Cagneistas, it's Marisha. I'm sitting in my car right now because I'm trying to catch the last little bit of light so that I can make this introduction for this delicious video that I've been trying to put out forever. But I'm never at home, so I can never do my intro. So we are going to make a very, very delightful, rich, decadent cake. This is going to be a pumpkin cheesecake and I absolutely love pumpkin and cheesecake. So I hope that you guys do too. Hopefully that's why you clicked on this video. This is going to be two layers of luscious pumpkin cake with a layer of actual spiced cheesecake in the center. I am actually making this cake to take with me to the next Fall Fest. I have loads of Fall Fest coming up. I really want this to be my like signature cake for fall. I'm going to slice this cake up, package it nicely, and take it to all of the cake nieces out there who don't even know that they're cake nieces just yet. I'm hoping and praying that it sells. I'm hoping that they like it. We shall see. So if you have not done so yet, go in and subscribe to the channel. Press on the notification bell, aka my back seat, okay? And let's get started. I have been waiting to make a pumpkin cake here once again on the channel because pumpkin means fall has arrived. We're going to start off by whisking our dry ingredients all except for the sugar. So here I have my all-purpose flour. I need to start getting some unbleached flour. I may already get unbleached flour. I don't pay attention to it but I'm, it's probably bleached, more than likely it's bleached, and I definitely want some um, bleached flour because bleached flour, it's not good for you. And now I have all of my spices as well as my baking soda and salt. I have some cinnamon here. I didn't have nutmeg, so I put a little bit of allspice there, and then I have some pumpkin pie spice, which does have nutmeg inside of it. A good amount of spices because um, pumpkin, hello. You know it's real when you can already smell the spices while you're just incorporating it in with your flour. Okay, let's move over to our other bowl. And here we're going to add the rest of our ingredient, the star of the show, the pumpkin puree. I hear that Libby's actually has the best pumpkin puree because it's the most strained, like it has the least amount of liquid. I don't know if that's true or not, but that could definitely make a huge difference in the outcome of your baked goods. And you can also puree your own pumpkin. All the pumpkins that are around, you would simply skin the pumpkin, roast it, and go ahead and puree. There's my pumpkin puree. I'm now going to add in my brown sugar, and I made this brown sugar just now. Just granulated sugar and molasses because I only had a little bit left. So you can see it's a little bit spotty. Let me begin mixing. Look at what my cheap, now it didn't feel cheap when I bought it, but I was really getting in there with some butter and that happened so I'm really really sad I'm trying to pretend like it's not there oh I just can't find the spatulas that I'm looking for yeah this is some good brown sugar that I made it's nice and dark let me add in my Greek yogurt now I <laughs> just happen to have some strawberry cheesecake Greek yogurt in the fridge and I needed a Greek yogurt so I tasted this just to make sure like the strawberry isn't too strong and it never is it's not I wouldn't know that it was strawberry cheesecake Greek yogurt if I didn't actually read the label and it's definitely not going to change the flavor of my cake and goes my vegetable oil and lastly my three eggs I was just listening to B2K <sighs> I can't tell you guys how significant they were to me. They were just about right. I, you know, it's funny because when NSYNC left, I was not expecting to be able to replace NSYNC with any group ever in the world. And then B2K came and I thought that B2K was a joke when I first saw them. And then I really started like listening to them and I saw them on 106 in Park and there we go. <laughs> so now I'm going to mix all of my wet ingredients. Let me use my whisk. I can really get in there. Let's combine the dry with the wet. 
I almost forgot my vanilla extract. Whoa. Some vanilla extract. And my pans are ready and fully prepared. They're lined with parchment paper and then I have some of my nonstick goop along the sides. I'm going to fill this up about halfway, maybe a little bit more than that. Let me see how much I have. Oh good, perfect, okay. Let's get these in the oven. I'm thinking they'll take about 30 minutes at 350 degrees in a preheated oven. I will let you guys know for sure when they come out. Fresh out the oven. They actually took a lot longer than I expected. 40 minutes in total at the 30 minute mark. I tested it, it was still raw in the center so I put some foil over it and then baked for another 10 minutes and now they are perfect. Wow. Wow, wow. I can smell all those beautiful spices. Yum, and it does look super moist. This looks great, let's do the next one. I'm going to allow this to cool. I'm going to wrap the cakes in plastic wrap and then I can finish working on this cake tomorrow. Is it hot? Yes, look at that. Oh wow, no <laughs> no signs of strawberry cheesecake yogurt, just loads of moisture and a nice richness, like a depth to it, that brown sugar, it's not overly sweet. This could even pass as a good pumpkin bread. Here are the ingredients for my cheesecake. We're doing a very simple cheesecake recipe. I've got some cream cheese, whole eggs, granulated sugar, I'm gonna do some pumpkin spice to make this a spice cheesecake. And of course some lemon juice. We have to have lemon juice in this cheesecake. So I have a large bowl here that looks like it had tomato sauce in it at one point. Don't mind that. It looks like it had Chef Boyardee in there. <laughs> and I also have my pan with some parchment on the bottom. I'm just using a regular cake pan. Same size as my pumpkin cake, of course, an eight inch. 16 ounces of cream cheese. So I'm going to blend this and it is room temperature, it's softened. I think one of my favorite foods is definitely cream cheese. I think it is, I might as well just admit it. Lemon juice. And you can do the sour cream and all that. This is just my go-to. I do want to taste it. <laughs> to make sure that it's sweet enough, of course, duh. Let's put in a little bit more. Lemon juice. Add in my two eggs. And it's important to add these last because you don't want to overmix your eggs because that can cause cracking. Let me get the sides. I have my water bath here. I really filled that bad boy up, didn't I? And goes my cheesecake. My oven is already preheating at 350 degrees. And this is going to bake for about an hour in the oven. Once that hour is up, I'm going to leave it in the oven for an hour. While the oven is off, I'm going to remove it from the oven and then I'm going to eventually let it refrigerate overnight. Okay, Kinesis, were y'all yelling at me to use the pumpkin spice? Because I definitely didn't hear y'all. I almost forgot because what I actually wanted to do was a little swirl station. I didn't want to like completely mix it in so that maybe I could see it when I cut it. We shall see, it may or may not work. Cause you know, I'm all about the art. <laughs> I'm all about the art of baking and now we can put it in the oven. And now we have to make my favorite frosting, 
Well, I don't know. Maybe that's whipped cream. But the cream cheese frosting is definitely a close second or a first place. I do have a separate video on how to make cream cheese frosting. Very, very simple. Butter, powdered sugar, Philadelphia cream cheese because it's more stable than other brands. Vanilla extract and you can do a pinch of salt. I just whip all of these ingredients together until it is nice and smooth and creamy and it is a pale yellow color. I put a dab onto my cake board and then I'm gonna put my first layer of cake. The cake is frozen, that's why it looks all stiff, okay? It's frozen, it's not dry as a board. I like to freeze my cakes before I decorate them. I'm gonna put a thin layer of cream cheese frosting onto my cake. You can go thick, but I wanted a thin layer because I need to make this slice of cake fit into my box, into my container. So next, that cheesecake is just gorgeous. The spice swirl is everything. I love how that turned out. That's gonna go on top. Now I'm going to put another thin layer of cream cheese frosting and then my next layer of pumpkin cake. After that, I'm going to crumb coat the entire cake in my frosting and just do a thin layer of buttercream on the outside, nothing too much. This cake is going to get sliced and put into containers. So I'm not going to coat the cake with a thick layer of frosting. I'm going to actually add more frosting on later after I put it into the containers. But for now, I found my caramel candies that I literally bought just to decorate a cake. The only thing is that I put it on there melted and it started solidifying the moment that it touched the cake because the cake was straight out the refrigerator. So I didn't get the full effect that I wanted. Not that it mattered because once I put it into the containers, you couldn't even see the caramel, but it was a nice little chewy addition to the top of the cake. So I wasn't totally mad at it. I have some crushed spiced cookies that I wanted to put on the top and bottom of the cake. Once again, me putting it on the top did nothing for the design. <laughs> at all because you couldn't really see it but it added a nice little spicy crunchy addition once again so this is going to go onto the border of the cake as well I made sure that my cake was completely solid before attempting to slice I do like to mark my cake and I'm going to get 12 servings out of this one three layer eight inch cake so I am slicing the cake in quarters or marking it rather and then each quarter gets marked into thirds. You could even go bigger than that because why not, you know? I still have room, I have plenty of space in that container so that's why I'm going to use that space to definitely fill it up with some more cream cheese frosting. Now we just need to fill our containers. Do you wanna see one of my worst nightmares? Like something that I just get so scared of happening? Yeah, that right there. I always get so fearful of that. I went out to Walmart and a few other stores looking for a pumpkin candy. It was so hard to find a pumpkin candy that actually looked like a pumpkin. I found one which is a classic, very, very classic candy. It actually tastes just like candy corn. So if you don't like candy corn, this may not be the candy for you to sit and snack on, but it is definitely cute as a little garnish or decoration to let everybody know that this is pumpkin cake. It's rich and delicious and amazing. So I finished packaging all of my cake slices up. I actually made labels for all of them, which show all of the ingredients that are in the cake. Now it is time to take this cake out to the public and see how they like it. I am now at a fall festival. The link will be in the description down below to the full video of this fall festival. You guys, it was so much fun. This festival was huge. I actually didn't film not even half of it. I just filmed a small portion of it, but everybody loved this cake. This is actually a few people's favorite cake now, including myself and my mom. I hope that you guys give this one a try and let me know what you think. Couture in a pumpkin cheesecake. Bye guys. This cake definitely is a favorite. People hear, oh pumpkin, oh cheesecake. I definitely got some great feedback on this cake. Um, Some of my family members almost ate this cake up before I could sell it. 
I almost ate this cake up before I could sell it because I had to taste it quality control and it's actually very 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 delicious the cake needs to comment of the day is going to go to Kelly Chellers who commented she really put y'all beside each other I hope that y'all had successful sales yes she did and I was like what in the world only because she specifically was like I made sure to not put you too close to the other baking vendor <laughs> and like look back at me and I was like oh great thank you so much you know like for being so thoughtful for her to just put us right beside each other right beside each other we're in the baking corner it was just weird I hope that she did well also she's so 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 sweet like awesome it was her first event you guys if you've watched the video it's my last fall fest video um Fall Fest down in the valley is that video. Not to mention the other baker, like what if she didn't want to be beside me? Not everybody's gonna be like, oh, it's fine, whatever. You know, some people really are like, don't put me next to the, you know, to the competition, the compi compi, as I like to say. But either way, I'm kind of glad that we were beside each other because we would not have met if we weren't right beside each other. So it kind of worked out, it was cool. But anyway, if you would like to be featured in the next video, Please make sure to comment down below and be subscribed to the channel. Let me know what you guys think of this cake and what kind of cake you would like to see next. And I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, cake nieces.